So today we would be looking at the very basic class, the very first class in electrostatics. So what do we mean by electrostatics? It is electrostatics talks about uh, these charges when they are not in motion, static charges, stationary charges. So this would be the first class in which we will discuss what do we mean by charge in the first place and then we will also talk about the properties of, of charge. So let us just understand what, for what do we mean by charge. So charge is an intrinsic property of a body. Uh, so what do I mean by uh, that intrinsic property? For that we will look at another intrinsic property which is known as which is very familiar to you which is known as mass. So this is the mass of a this is a ball uh, which has a mass m and of course you know by experience that this is if this is the earth this is the surface of the earth then the due to the mass of this ball it would be attracted towards the earth it would fall towards the earth. Now what we do not see in this diagram what we do not see in this uh, common real life is that our earth it also has a mass of capital M and because of these two masses capital M and small m because of the interaction of these two masses there is a force generated between these two objects the ball and the earth and this is known as gravitational force. So we know all of this okay. So very similar uh, to the intrinsic property of the body mass we also have another property of the body which is known as charge. So charge the very simple and common example of a body having charge is that of an electron. So we know that an electron revolves around uh, the nucleus in an atom and the nucleus this also has a charge. So when we say that an, a body has a charge it, it means that it has a non-zero charge. So in the case of an electron there is a non-zero charge on it and in the case of the nucleus there is also the non-zero charge on it. But unlike mass uh, the charges come in two flavors okay. So the mass is bland okay you in some ways there are no flavors it is not like an ice cream which has several flavors. Okay, so charge there is only a single flavor there is sing, only a single version of uh, sorry for mass there is a single version of mass okay there are not two versions whereas in the case of charge there are two versions or two flavors of charge and we just call them negative and positive those are just names which have been given historically people used to call them and we continue to call them like that and there are two uh, it just means that there are two kinds of charges one of them we call negative the other one we call positive. It just so happens that the nucleus inside the atom it has a positive charge the electron which revolves around the nucleus has a negative charge. Now because the charges they come in two flavors there is an added complication and what is that whereas the gravitational force is always attractive which means that two bodies which have masses would always attract each other. In the case of charge that is not the case. If the two bodies have negative charges or both the bodies have positive charges which means that they have like charges then they would repel each other they would move away from each other whereas if the two bodies have opposite charges then they would get attracted towards each other the same happens between the electron and the nucleus because they have opposite charges the electrons are attracted they are tied in some ways to the nucleus. The force between the charges right, similar to the gravitational force which happens between the masses the force which happens between the charges is known as Coulomb's force okay and we will talk more about the Coulomb's force in the next uh, class. So again definitely subscribe to the channel because next class will be also be super important. But before we move on to the Coulomb's force let us look at the two properties of charges again very very important the two most important properties of charge are conservation and quantization. So what do I mean by conservation? Conservation means that in any closed system closed isolated system the total amount of charge always remains constant the charge can neither be created nor destroyed. So for example in this universe which is the ultimate uh, closed uh, system uh, that we know of and it is ideally closed system uh, the total amount of charge always remains conserved it always remains the same. So the universe becomes uh, very very big it is very hard to imagine things when we are talking about at the level of, of universe. So here in the picture we have just drawn a diagram and the diagram is such this box in the diagram is such that the charges cannot uh, or the mass cannot really get exchanged between inside the box and outside the box. 
although energy it's allowed to be exchanged so if a photon of of energy comes along and it hits a particle inside the box causing the particle to be divided into a negative and a positive charge before this interaction with photon happens if this box if the things inside the box were neutral then this will have to be true even after this interaction because of the law of conservation of charge what does that mean it means that the two charges the plus and minus which have been created would have to be equal and opposite which means that if i add them together i would get a net of zero charge this is what law of conservation means this is the demonstration of it now as a consequence of this law of conservation what happens is that if i were to create an electron inside this box i would have to create a uh, a substance a particle with equal and opposite charge and this is known as a positron so positron is also a sub atomic particle and because of the law of conservation of charge the, po the positron has to exist its existence is actually determined by the law of conservation of charge so because and and now we know that the positron actually exists so a positron is a particle which is same in each and every way to the electron except that it has an opposite charge equal and opposite charge so electron has a negative charge a positron has a positive charge okay so the um, the, the positron uh, is in fact an anti particle of uh, electron but we don't have to really remember that we just have to understand that the consequence of the positron's existence is because of the law of conservation of charge that if i create an electron i have to create an equal and opposite charge which is there in the case of a positron so that is the first law what about the second uh, important property that is the quantization now what do i mean by quantization so very very simple example of quantization you might have seen when you look at the images inside your uh, device okay so that is the uh, quantization so here in the in the image if i have a diagonal line uh, in the device and if i zoom in zoom in zoom in and zoom in uh, you will realize that this diagonal line is not diagonal at all it is formed by these individual pixels which happen to be rectangular okay so no matter what what i do i cannot really if i zoom in zoom in zoom in then this is the maximum precision with which i can draw the diagonal line because the individual pixels are only this small so this beyond this if i want to achieve the precision i if i want to keep on making the diagonal line beautiful i cannot do that at some point definitely when that pixel limit is reached i will see these jagged lines and that happens because of a phenomena known as quantization this is a very simple demonstration of quantization so what does it mean in the case of a, in in the case of the diagonal line which we are viewing on the screen and zooming in it means that i cannot really create half a pixel if i were to were able to create half pixel then perhaps i can i can make this diagonal line a little bit uh, better but because i cannot do that i cannot really make this diagonal line uh, more accurate than what uh, i have already with this amount of pixels okay so this is the simple example of quantization quantization means that anything that i have to represent on the screen i would i have to represent with either one two or three pixels i cannot really use half pixel one and a half pixel that is not possible i cannot really do that okay so in the case of charge it is very very similar if i have to create a charge i would have to uh, the smallest charge which is possible in the case of device it is just one pixel in the case of charge it is just the charge of an electron so this is the smallest charge which is possible if i want to create charges uh, bigger than that of an electron i would have to use one electrons two electrons three electrons i really cannot use half an electron okay so electron the charge on the electron is 1.602 into 10 raised to power minus 19 coulombs and this is the quantization of charge which means that i cannot really create charges which are smaller than that of an electron at least not according to the classical electrostatics okay so when we come to quantum electrostatics uh, there there are some twists and turns but as far as we are concerned our theory is concerned we say that the charge is quantized 
it can only ever be found in the multiples of the charge of an electron i cannot have half an electron charge three and a half or three quarters of an electron charge now with this we complete the lecture we have in, in, uh, covered the two very important properties we have covered the definition of charge next class we will deal with the coulomb's law then we will move on to the gauss's law and then we will move on to the electrodynamics which is the study of current so definitely subscribe to the channel because you can expect questions uh, on all of these topics many many questions on these topics very very important for your exam thank you